suburban in the neighborhood. Today, we are going to be opening and tasting James E. Pepper, 1776, straight bourbon whiskey. The reason we grabbed this one today is because we believe that this is one of the best values on the market right now. Um, you can find these in the high 20s. I would say anywhere from 27 to 32 dollars. And it's pretty cool because it's a famous old name. This used to be called the Old Pepper Bourbon Whiskey. At the time of the American Revolution, this distillery was rumored to be the largest in the, in the country. Um, the namesake, Colonel James E. Pepper, was actually a third generation distiller. And he would carry on his grandfather's recipe. And in the late 1800s, uh, they were maybe the most famous, some would argue the oldest, uh, but definitely the biggest around the time of the American Revolution. The guy was a pretty interesting fellow. He was a flamboyant industrialist. Um, he was a staunch whiskey advocate. He was a horseman who raised thoroughbreds that, were, that raced in the Kentucky Derby and other huge races uh, throughout this country as well as in Europe. We moved forward through the 1950s and at that time when bourbon fell on hard times, the distillery closed Sad, I know, for half a century approximately. Uh, but the good news is, nowadays, they have decided to reopen in Lexington, Kentucky. 2017, they began distilling back on old grounds in Lexington, Kentucky, and it was revitalized. Now what we have here is sourced. It's sourced from MGP out of Indiana, which a lot of you I'm sure have heard of to get them off the ground. And they really did a good job with this. It's a high rye uh, mash bill. It's 50 7% corn, 4% malted barley, 39% rye in the mash bill. Non-chill filtered, 100 proof. So, let's give it a try. A little bit of a light amber caramel type color, medium viscosity it looks like as you see definitely vanilla a little bit of caramel on the nose you get a little bit of that younger alcohol aroma a little bit of cocoa let's give it a try Right off the bat, I get that rye. A little bit of a cinnamon, hot spice rye. Then you start getting a little bit of the vanilla. A little bit of cocoa. Almost burnt a little bit. It is hot. Oak, I find, starts coming through middle to the finish. Finish is medium. Again, thinner mouthfeel, but fairly complex for what you're getting. You're getting a little bit of the almost a malted grain flavor as well. So tell me what does it taste again? You may want to ask it differently. Okay. You may want to be, you mentioned this earthy, grainy taste. What, what do you mean by that? So what do you mean by that? <laughs> I see what you're doing. <laughs> ah, I got my eye on you. <laughs> so what does what does earthy mean? Have you tasted? Yeah, when I say earthy, I guess it kind of threw me off because the first thing I tasted, which is also what you tasted, Jason, is that that rye, but in a cinnamon type flavor rather than a black pepper flavor that I'll get from rye a lot of times. I thought it was more of a cinnamon hot spice that hits you initially. But then as it 
you go through the palate and the flavors that are beginning to evolve, I found a little more once you got through the caramel, the vanilla, a little bit of the cocoa, as it got to the finish, I started getting more of this grainy, almost earthy taste that's kind of, you picture being out on the farm, man. Out on the farm, munching on some like grains, whether it be malted barley or, or oats or something that makes it a little bit, a bit from the ground, something that you think of as a, as a crop that kind of seeps into the flavor profile. A few of these bourbons that I think are in the 25 to 30 range that are really good buys. Um, is it going to be as thick, as rich, as complex as some of the other ones we may have had? No, but you're not paying 25 to $30 for those either. So when you're thinking about which ones are really good values, in my opinion, this one stands out in that 25 to $30 range. There are a few around this price range that I think everyone should have on their shelf. This isn't at the top of our list. Again, I would put the Eagle Rare 10 and the Elijah Craig Small Batch, personally, as the two around the high 20s, um, $30 range that deserve a prominent role on your shelf. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And please leave in the comments something that you would like for us to review. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Pause it now and put it on YouTube. <laughs> Pause it now and put it on YouTube. You better subscribe. I'm approving a message. <laughs> Travis. Uh, <laughs> take two, take two.